Hey guys, welcome back to the Sonar Sewing Patterns YouTube channel. Today I am making the boxy zipper pouch using the tutorial on mellysews.com. Enjoy! So to get started in making the Melly Sews boxy zipper pouch, I have all of my pieces cut and ready to go. Her pattern calls for two pieces of outer fabric that will be 16 by 10 inches, but I cut mine down to 12 by 10 because I want a smaller overall bag. The bag size that I'm going for is eight inches long by six and a half wide, and it's just a little bit smaller, easier to pack, and not quite as large. Melly Sews tutorial will create a bag that is 11 inches long by six inches wide by four inches tall. So that was just a little bit bigger than I was going for, so I downsized. So again, I have my pieces. I've got two lining pieces and I've got two outer pieces, both cut at 12 by 10. And then for my strap, I just cut one big piece of seven by six and I'm going to do the old right sides together, sew and then flip to create my strap. And then I have my zipper. My zipper is 16 inches. It is really long and we're gonna end up cutting some off on either end once we get sewing. So let's get started. So I have one outer piece and one lining piece, which let's just take a second and admire this in all of its glory. This is Juicy Juice's um, fabric line by Andover Fabrics. I just love it. It's actually more of a navy and a light blue print, but I think it'll be nice and subtle against this black cork. And I got the cork from Fabric Fun House. I'll link both of those in the description box below. I got my zipper from Zip It Zippers on Etsy. Uh, super quick shipping, I love them, and really fair pricing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is grab my glue, which I always use, Beacon Fabri-Tac. It's my go-to, it dries super quick, and it's clear. My only negative thing about it is that when you get low in the bottle of glue, it'll start to bubble out automatically, and that's rather annoying. It wastes kind of a decent amount, but it is by far the best glue that I've ever found to use when doing quick sewing, when you don't have time to wait for the glue to set. So I just did a thin line of glue. I have my zipper head facing left, and I'm gonna glue it down right sides together. So the top of the zipper to the outside of the outer piece. Gently tap that into place, lining up my edges. I'm gonna do another bead of glue. If I can get the glue to come out, there we go. And so if you read over and follow the tutorial on Melly Sews, then you'll notice that these steps are exactly how she outlines to do them. The only thing that I've changed so far is just the size of my dop kit and everything else will be the same. So, all right, so while this glue is setting, I'm gonna get my strap piece and I'm going to fold it long sides together, line up those edges and clip in place. And then I'm gonna move over to the machine and top stitch both of these. All right, so you might have noticed that I have not interfaced my cotton, and that is true. I don't interface almost ever when I'm using cork because I like the, the structure that cork gives cotton. It's nice and supple and without being rigid, and so I prefer that, but if you want to, you can easily um, interface your cotton. And then in the tutorial, Melly Sews, she says that you can also use Peltex on the outer layer, and so I'm also foregoing that. You'll notice. So on my machine, I have, well, I guess I could just show you. I have a Mettler cone here. It's 40 weight thread. It's cotton silk finish. And then I have a size 12 Microtex needle. And I'm going to be stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance here with a 3.2 um, stitch length. threads on and then so what I'm gonna do is just fold the top piece over which is the outer body piece 
and I'm gonna leave the lining flipped under like that. And what that's gonna do is it's going to skip top stitching the lining from the bottom and it just makes it a lot easier to sew it like that without having to worry if you're catching everything and I don't have any issues with the lining getting caught in the zipper so this is how I make all of my bags. So with this top stitch I'm going to stitch at a 1 8 seam allowance and then just finger press the whole way making sure that there isn't any waves or bumps in the zipper tape. threads here. And then just fold this lining back. And if you can see, see it just makes it lay nice and flat and just looks nicer I think. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is top stitch along the top edge of the handle. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance for this. And then I'm going to trim my threads here and I'm going to flip this right side out. And to get this top edge to lay nicely, I'm just going to finger press it out. And just kind of roll the seams together and then finger press it. And then now I'm going to top stitch all the way around the entire handle at 1 8 seam allowance. I added my tag before I um, sewed this all together. That was I did that before I started filming. So I'm going to pop back over to the cutting table. Alrighty, so now we are going to create a zipper sandwich on the other side of the zipper. So I'm going to grab my outer body piece and put a bead of glue along the top. I think if you prefer, and if your machine doesn't mind, this could easily be done with double-sided tape as well. My machine acts a little funky when I use it. It gums up my needles a good bit. So you just wanna make sure all of your sides are lined up and your bottom is straight, and then that your zipper tape is straight on your panel piece here. All right. There we go. Now we're just going to move back over to the machine and we're going to top stitch this down as well. Another thing that I'm doing is I am stitching with the cork side up because I do not interface my cotton. It will have a tendency to bunch with the pressure from the uh, foot here. So if I stitch with the cork side up, I don't have that problem and it keeps the lining fabric nice and neat under there. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance.
And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna flip over the cork here and finger press. And then eighth inch seam allowance. Threads that are showing. All right, so the next step, according to the tutorial, is you flip both of the outer pieces and line up the bottom edges. And you're going to sew that. I'm going to sew this one at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you do the same thing with the lining. So line up their long edge here, clip, and then sew. And I'm gonna sew the lining at 5 8 seam allowance just to help it lay nicer inside the bag. trim down my seam allowance so that they are one eighth Ooh, we got a fresh blade on here it's so nice nothing worse than trying to cut cork and fabric with a dull blade Alrighty. so the next step in the Melly Sews tutorial is to open your piece like so and you're gonna line up this bottom seam here. You know, I'm gonna flip it and finger press it a little bit inside there. So you're gonna line your seam up with the zipper tape. You want it to be centered. And you're gonna clip just the outside pieces together. Now I'm going to turn and do the same on this side. And then now you can see that the lining is loose and we're going to do the same thing. Center that bottom seam over the zipper and clip. And there we go. So you can see I have my two lining pieces clipped together and my two outer. And what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go back to the machine and we're gonna sew from the outside edge all the way to the zipper tape and then stop. We're gonna skip the zipper and do the same thing on this side, but we're gonna do every section individually. So two outer on this edge, two inner on this edge, and then flip and do the same down here. So I'll meet you back at the machine. I'm not sure what happened, but the video cut off on me. So to catch you up, what I filmed was you start sewing at this outer edge all the way until you meet the zipper tape and then you're going to skip the actual zipper and sew this other side 
And then I also said that in a minute, the next step that we're gonna do is be cutting out our box edges here to make this a box bag. And so I went ahead and made my mark where I'm gonna be cutting it so I could put some stay stitches there. Because if you don't do that, then whenever you cut that seam and you try to box your edges out, the seam's gonna come open, it's gonna make it a nightmare. So I went ahead and added extra stay stitches there at my cutting mark. So I'm on my last outer edge here. I'm flipping everything out of the way every time I'm sewing. And I'm gonna just add this seam edge here. All right, so all of my outer edges are done and I just need to do my lining. So I'm gonna flip everything backwards and pull my, just my lining piece here. And I'm gonna start at a 5 8 seam allowance in from this outside edge 5 8 and I'm gonna taper back to a quarter inch seam allowance so that it meets up with the, the quarter inch that I used on the outer panels. But this will help the bag, the lining lay nicely, nest nicely inside. One. Oh, and I have to do my stay stitches. All right, move over to this side. So now that all of our edges are sewn individually, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to sew all three of these layers together. So the outside, the zipper, and the lining. And so I'm just going to sew that gap that I skipped over before. And what this is going to do is sew all three of those pieces together so when we flip the bag inside out, there'll be a nice finished seam on the inside. So I'm going to start on this side. You want to be sure to back stitch really nicely so that nothing pops out. And then on this side, you want to be sure to push your zipper head through the opening before you sew this together or else you're going to have to take it apart. I'm sure you can figure out how I know that. This is my fourth dock kit using this tutorial and I've forgotten on two out of the four to do that. All right, so now the bag is all sewn together. Oh no, you know what I just realized? I didn't leave a birthing hole under here in the lining. So I'm gonna have to fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add some stay stitches here and then I'll pop these stitches out. So yeah, when you are sewing that bottom seam on your lining way back in step one or two, be sure to leave a birthing hole. I've also done this, I think, on every bag, but this is an easy fix. All right, so there we go. You can see that I sewed up and then across and same on this side. That's really helpful for whenever we flip the bag right side out and we need to stitch this lining together at the very end to um, close this hole. Having those stitches, the L stitch, it'll make turning it much easier and make a nice edge, nice seamed edge there. All right, so I'm going to pop back over to the cutting table and show you the next step. All right, so since I need to pop these stitches, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. My seam ripper and I are best friends. 
I don't know what type of relationship you have with yours, but I wear these bad boys out. myself too. All right, so I'm going to trim down these seam allowances here just to, well, actually no. First, I'm going to mark my boxes so that I can get an accurate measurement. So because I want a three inch tall bag, I'm going to cut out one and a half inch squares on every corner of every piece. So I'm just going to mark that here. So just you can see one and a half by one and a half. Now, if you wanted your bag to have a four inch height, you would just cut out two inches. If you wanted your bag to only have a two inch height, you would cut out one inch boxes. Do the same on my lining here. It's too big. All right, so now I'm going to cut these out. I'm just gonna cut them both at the same time. So we've got all four or all eight of our sections cut out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in and unzip my zipper just a bit because I need to insert my strap into the boxed edge here. And I want to be careful to make sure that my tag is facing the right way. So I'm going to unzip my zipper kind of keep an eye on what I'm doing. Otherwise, I will put it in upside down. And I also know that because I've done that too. Okay, and I'm only gonna put it on the um, the inner, or the outer pieces. I'm just like, you'll see. Okay, so this is gonna be the top of my bag. Okay. This part is so confusing to me mentally. And so I want my strap to be on the edge where the zipper end, it sits whenever the bag is closed. And that's gonna be this side. And so you're just gonna kind of, with the lining out of the way, just gonna fold these up. And then I'm gonna slide the strap in here. I'm gonna reach in through my lining hole and pull it through. And then I'm also gonna double check. Yep, that's right. So what I'm gonna do is now I have these ends, the end of the strap in here, seated right in between the box edge. I'm gonna line it up as best as I possibly can. And pin it. Cork can be a bit fiddly to work with, but just own it. All right, now I'm gonna reach in and find the other strap end 
and pull it through this edge and do the same thing. see here I've got it all clipped together and then I'm gonna line up my boxes on this side too doesn't seem quite as seamless. You can see how it doesn't quite line up all the way, but I'm just going to pull it down to make the edge straight. You can see there's a little bit of overlap there, but I'm just going to sew a quarter inch in from that seam. All right, so we've got all of our box edges here and I'm gonna move back over to the machine and stitch these into place. All right, so the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna flatten my pieces all together to make it easier to work with and then I'm gonna just sew from one end, one end to the other. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance again. And I'm going to backstitch super good on this because this handle is going to be bearing a lot of the weight whenever it's being carried around. There you go. And now I'm going to do the other side. fiddly when I was pinning it, clipping it rather. There we go, you can see it's starting to take shape now. Since I'm working at the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and do this next step here. All I'm gonna do is box out my cotton corners here, pin them into place, and then I'm gonna sew them down.
All right, now I've got them all pinned, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. And I'm gonna do these at um, not quite five eighths, that's a little much, but I think I'm gonna go into just under a half inch seam allowance here. All four done, so I'm gonna pop back over to the sewing table. I'm gonna trim down all of these seam allowances, trim my zipper, and then it's time to flip the bag. All right, so let's trim these seam allowances down. I'm not gonna take them down too small, especially over here with the strap, but I'm just gonna neaten the edges up a bit so that everything will lay nicely once it's all flipped. cotton edges I'm taking down pretty low one eighth of an inch cut down on bulk bad boy right side out. So through the birthing hole, you're going to unzip your zipper all the way and then carefully push everything through. So here's the bag inside out. It's pretty cool. All my corners here. Yay! Pretty cute. Twins. So the last step that we're gonna have to do is pull this lining back out a bit and then we're gonna fold these edges in on each other so that we can close this birthing hole. This is where those little seven L seven stitches came will come in handy because it gives you a nice turning edge. Just gonna finger press that a little bit. Grab some pins. Pin this bad boy closed. Your 
and then I'm gonna pop back over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch along this birthing hole and then we'll be all done. I'm gonna try to get as close to the zipper as I can. So I'm gonna flip the lining out like this, slide that edge under, and then sew at a really small eighth or just under an eighth, sixteenth of an inch seam allowance. Trim our threads and flip it all back together. zipper in. Push that seam out a little better. Ta -da. So there we go. It's all done. Um, I'm just going to stuff it full of newspaper or bubble wrap or something to help it expand out. I think the only other thing that I would change about this pattern, not change, but add to it, would be a zipper tab here on this end so that when you're unzipping and zipping it, you have something else to hold on to. But other than that, I think it's a really straightforward, great pattern. Um, I like that the inside is finished. There's no raw edges and it makes a nice, cute bag. So let me know what you think of the video, leave me a comment, press subscribe, uh, join my sewing group on Facebook, yada, 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 all the standard stuff. And um, yeah, happy sewing.